All right, hello everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Emily and I am the marketing director for Klingscale's Elder Law Practice in our office here in Hayes. We are very excited to bring you this workshop today entitled Eight Things You Need to Know for the Second Half of Life. Attorney Randy Klingscales will be presenting for you this morning and please feel free to send any questions that you may have to me in the chat box that's located at the bottom of your screen and then at the very end of this presentation we will go ahead and address any of those questions that you may have. So at this point I'm just going to go ahead and start and give it over to Randy to start us off. Uh, hello everyone, uh, Randy Klingscales here and Emily thank you so much. Uh, today we're going to talk about secrets you need to know for the second half of life. Um, and to me, this is a little bit of, um, uh, if, I, if I had to place things in, in order of priorities, uh, we did a talk a couple of weeks ago about if the diagnosis is dementia, uh, if you not participated in that and want to hear that recording, uh, let Emily know that, and we'll give you the contact information later on. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about um, how to, to pay for long-term care. But today we're, we're really focused on uh, kind of a bigger picture, if you will. Uh, and so you're, go you're going to discover important components and considerations for your long-term care plan. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to preserve and protect your assets. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to uh, not pay too much money to the government. There have been some changes in the last year or two, uh, and we're going to talk about ways to stay at home. Uh, this is for you if you're wondering if you need some type of estate plan or whether your current plan is adequate. Um, I know some of the, some of you who are on the call today are, are clients, and uh, some of you are what we call part of our partners in planning, and so feel really comfortable that your plans are up to date. But again, as part of your participation here uh, in this, you're entitled to a, a free consultation. Uh, in addition, uh, as Emily uh, may or may not have mentioned, if you've got a comment, there's a chat at the bottom. You can uh, type in your chat and she'll let me know. So this is for you if you're concerned about what happens if you become incapacitated. Uh, worried about your family and how can you protect them. If you're concerned about how to protect your property should, or if you're concerned about how your property should be divided uh, upon your passing or if you become disabled, or if you're wondering how to protect and protect, preserve and protect what you have. Uh, if you're concerned about long-term care costs, if you're wanting to pass a business or property on to your family or to others, if you're wanting to stay at home and out of the nursing home, and many times that's what's really important to me. So again, we're gonna take a broad view of what we, what, what we all need to be doing versus of dealing with a current uh, significant chronic illness that we really have to hone down into more specific solutions. So if you, if you kind of think for a moment, if you could uh, wave a magic wand uh, what would that look like? Uh, for many of my clients, it's to stay at home as, as they age, uh, to be sure that they have someone that would follow their wishes should you lose capacity, uh, if you want to stay in control as long as possible, uh, and to pass on a legacy through the family. Uh, and not you lose property because of government taxes and not worry about losing property to long-term care costs and having peace of mind that, it, that everything is arranged. Uh, I wanna tell you a quick story. Uh, I just had a meeting, uh, been working with a family for many, many years. Um, we did some asset protection and we'll kind of touch on that a little bit about what we did for them. But now um, the husband uh, has transitioned uh, into assisted living because of dementia. Uh, and, but we've got a great plan for them. And this, this last item, having peace of mind that everything is arranged, uh, was so important uh, when, I, when I spoke with, his, with his, my client's wife and his son. 
um, they were so glad that years ago we got started. Here is a, a family that we worked with. Sherry uh, came to us. Her husband had Parkinson's. And uh, this is a quote from her. My husband had Parkinson's. You helped me keep him in, at home as long as possible. You showed me how to be a better caregiver. I could not have figured out how to pay for care with Medicare and Medicaid on my own. And then she went on to say that she highly recommended our office. So let, let me give you a little bit of background about uh, uh, myself. Um, again, my staff puts this slideshow together. And so they chose a chimpanzee to represent me. I'm not sure what that implies, but I am an attorney. Uh, I've been practicing about 40 years, uh, almost 41 years. Uh, we have uh, offices in Hayes and Wichita. Uh, we have some other satellite offices, but we have our primary offices are, are in Hayes and Wichita. Uh, I'm what's called an elder care attorney. Uh, so I really have focused my practice on working with people with aging and chronic care issues. Uh, and also uh, with people that are wanting to protect their assets from long-term care costs. Uh, I, I put on here, the, the last 16 years have been the best and that's because that's when I uh, transitioned to, to elder care. Just way of background, this is my family. Uh, I've got three sons, uh, uh, my wife of uh, 40 years, uh, my daughter-in-law and my uh, two grandsons who uh, uh, mean the world to me. But let me talk a little bit about why, why did I make this transition and why, uh, why am I so passionate uh, in this area? Um, but let me just maybe, before I talk about my grandmother a little bit, um, my, my journey really began uh, uh, when I was working with my mom uh, and my grandmother got sick and I worked with my mom to get everything established. And then all of a sudden my uh, mom died unexpectedly. And I then began to realize that what had been established in Texas for my mother and my grandmother was inadequate. Uh, and so I started to take care of my grandmother. And what I did, I, what, I, what happened is I learned some things from her that were, were most important. Um, you know, I thought she was going to tell me the most important thing that she needed was a will or a, or a power of attorney. Uh, what, she, what was most important to her was that she stay independent, uh, uh, that she stay out of the nursing home as long as she could. Um, she didn't have a lot of resources, but she wanted to be able to maintain the lifestyle that she wanted. And then I also learned that as a caregiver for my grandmother, I really needed assistance and guidance. And, and just because I was a lawyer uh, didn't mean I had all the answers. In fact, I knew I had very few answers that were helpful to my grandmother. I learned that I had to have a plan, but the plan grows different, changes as we grow older and the journey is ever changing and it can be complicated. I also learned when my mom died and I looked at my grandmother's documents that the form documents are not the answers, uh, that, that it, it takes a lot more than that and they need to be ind individualized to what is important to you and what your goals are. And the journey can be, and, and it actually was wonderful in taking care of my grandmother. So uh, this is from a, another client. Um, uh, it says, when my wife got sick I needed, and needed the nursing home, I, I was told I would have to sell my home and my farm. I thought I would go broke, ready to save my farm for, for me and my children. And I remember meeting with uh, Mr. Woods and his son uh, and how anxious they were, um, that's very much an understatement, uh, about uh, the concerns that they had about losing their farm. 
Uh, Emily, before we go on, I, I just want to check with everyone. Are you able to see the slides okay and hear all right? Just uh, if you'll go to the chat box, chat box and type Y for yes or N for no. Uh, and and uh, Emily, just interrupt me anytime you want to when you've got some results. Um, we already have quite a few yeses. So I okay. think we're good to go. Great, great. So uh, a comprehensive long-term plan is essential for the second half of life uh, to establish, preserve, and protect your wishes. Uh, so today you're going to discover that it's more about forms uh, or cookie cutter estate planning documents. You know, today I saw on Facebook, you could order your trust and will and so forth for $89. And it, it's just so much more than uh, uh, those types of cookie cutter forms that may, not, may or may not reflect what you want. Um, I have a, a client now that years ago, uh, uh, they had done their own estate plan and brought it to me. And in his estate plan, he, he left his wife out of it. And in her estate plan that they, they drafted online, uh, she had left the kids out of it. So uh, again, most people don't make that big a mistake, but they both did. But uh, you're going to discover that your goals need to be reflected in your plan. You need to decide what needs to be protected. Uh, you need to decide what's important. You can protect family members from divorce, death, debts, drugs, whatever it is. Uh, and you, you, you don't have to go broke if you need long-term care. Uh, with careful planning, we can avoid unnecessary taxes. And it's really, really important to express your desires in ways that you're willing to, to go to to stay at home. So let's go to number one. There are important components your estate plan should include. Uh, there are fundamental documents that need to express your wishes. And it's important to make, this cor make, make the correct beneficiary designations on like your accounts, your, your retirement plans and the like. There are ways that you can protect family members from their own problems, their spouse's problems, their kids' problems, um, government problems, uh, but that needs to be in your planning documents. Uh, special needs planning is important. And what do I mean by that? If you've got someone that has special needs, uh, a disabled child, or again, someone maybe that's got real problems with managing money, there are ways that we can uh, protect uh, those people. I'm going to share a story with you. It's one of my, uh, one of, a story that really interests me a lot. Um, this is about James Dean, and some of you who are older are going to remember who that who he was. He was an actor uh, that uh, was a bright star for a very short period of time. Uh, he was not married and he had no children. Uh, his mother predeceased James, uh, but he was then estranged from his father. Uh, his, he died in 1955. He had no will or trust and under intestate law, his father was his only heir. So the one person he really didn't care for uh, was his only heir. And as a result, his father ended up inheriting his fortune, what was $100,000 at the time, but also his rights to his name, et cetera. And I, uh, the article that I was reading about this was in 2014, that estate uh, was valued at $4 million and still making money uh, through his father um, and his father's, whoever benefited from his father's estate. Uh, but they were still benefiting uh, from the fact that James Dean did not have a will and did not 
was not able to, to direct where his fortune went. This is a family that came in to, to see us. Uh, again, I've changed the names. Uh, uh, Mr. Jackson was still working. Uh, Mrs. Jackson was retired. They own their home. The, they have a family business, investments and re <clears throat> retirement funds of $400,000. They had a pay on death to each other and to all four children. And they were relatively <clears throat> healthy. <clears throat> but they had no estate plan in place. <clears throat> they had four children. Uh, Bud was, was married with two children uh, and he works in the business and wants to take it over. Uh, their son, Mark, unfortunately uh, predeceased them, but had a special needs child. Their daughter, Debbie, is going through a divorce and has a child and daughter Barbara has been in and out of drug rehab programs, is divorced and has two children who live with their father. When I met with them, really kind of the goal was they wanted the business to stay in the family. Uh, they wanted it to go to Bud, but they wanted to be fair to the, all the children and they wanted to avoid lit litigation. And they wanted something to pass to some of their grandchildren. I explained to them if they did nothing, there was no power of attorney in place with their wishes. So that if something happened to one of them, the other one had no power to act. So a spouse doesn't have an automatic power to act for the, for the other spouse. So court would be necessary. If they died, there would have to be a probate. If they died without a will, without a plan, the, it would be divided into four parts equally and the business most likely would be lost. Uh, the property would be, could be lost to the divorce. So uh, in this case, Debbie's going through, the, through a divorce and her share of the, of the business could be lost uh, in that divorce. Uh, Barb's drug issues uh, could affect her uh, inheritance. Uh, the disabled child of Mark could lose the, uh, the child's benefits uh, by inheriting property if, the, if that child is on some type of disability. So the solution that we worked with uh, and I, I like the, if you look at the very bottom of this slide, uh, uh, thanks so much for your help. We didn't know what we didn't know. So what we're able to do, again, their initial goal was to uh, be sure that Bud could operate the business. <clears throat> but what we did, we set up good uh, POAs with good agents. We added 14 powers to, their, to the, the power of attorney to give them some specific powers that they wouldn't that the agent wouldn't ordinarily have. In their, in their healthcare power of attorney, we described what was important to, you, to them. We set up a revocable trust to manage and avoid probate. We set it up in such a way that Bud would be inheriting the business and other property would be divided among the other three families. And we expressed it in such a way so that it would avoid probate. Importantly, we set up Debbie's inheritance so that it would be protected from, her, from divorce. We set up a special needs trust for Mark's child so that the child would forever have funds available and would not lose Medicaid or other government benefits. And finally, we, we protected Barb's inheritance from her, her drug problems and that if something did happen to her, that the money would go to her children and not to their father. Uh, and we, we, we corrected all their beneficiary designations. And I, like I said, on the left side of this screen, you know, their comment was, we, we just didn't know where to start. Uh, and, and again, to go back, they didn't know what they didn't know. And so sometimes with a trusted advisor, uh, I, I think it, it's, Giving, your goal, giving them your goals and, and then letting them figure out what other questions you need to be asking uh, 
but the key is to get started, get started with goals and get started with somebody you trust. So what do you need to do? From our standpoint, we would wanna meet with you uh, for a, a strategy session and together we will work to determine your goals and your concerns. We'll explore what options are available to you. Uh, we absolutely want to get strong documents in place, documents that we need to review every couple of years and update them. We need to start implementing the strategy right away so that we can avoid road, roadblocks or changes in circumstances. And that would be like a capacity issue or, or a health issue that would eliminate some tools that we may uh, want to recommend that you adopt. So let's talk about number two. Um, there are ways to protect and preserve uh, your assets for long-term care costs. So I want you to understand that with planning, you can protect what is most important to you. You can make a decision on how to pay for care versus a court or, or uh, some law. Uh, you need to, you're, you're going to learn that you don't have to go broke if you need long-term care. And you hear that all the time, you have to go broke. You'll learn that there are some government benefits to help pay for care, such as Medicare, VA, and Medicaid. So let's, let's give an example. Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. <clears throat> They're both in their 70s. Mrs. Johnson came to us. Uh, Mr. Johnson had had a stroke. Uh, you know, he'd been pretty healthy until the stroke, and he's in the hospital. Uh, the hospital wants to discharge him. Uh, they've got some income, a home, and some investments, and they have some long term care insurance. Mrs. Johnson is concerned about how to pay for care. And what happens if the long-term care policy is used up? Remember, it's only for three years. Again, it looks like a $200 a day policy looks good, but kind of understand today that we're now in the neighborhood of $7,000 to $10,000 a month for long-term care. So she was justifiably concerned that the long-term care policy would run out, particularly with a stroke, where, which could end up being in a nursing home for a long time. She wanted to preserve something for herself uh, and the children. So our solution is that we help Mr. Johnson to transition to a skilled facility so that Medicare would pay versus they were talking about just moving him to a nursing home, which Medicare would not have paid for. We developed a plan for Mr. Johnson to come home. Uh, as part of that plan, we tapped into the long-term care policy that would pay for some home care as well as home improvements to make it more accessible. And by doing so, by using that long-term care policy, we were able to shield some of their resources. Uh, Mr. Johnson's care at the skilled facility was paid for by Medicare. Uh, Mr. Johnson got well enough to go home with a lot of assistance. And the assistance was paid for by long-term care, uh, by the long-term care policy. So Mrs. Johnson's, I'm gonna pat her on the back. Mrs. Johnson's early involvement, uh, in other words, right when Mr. Johnson had a stroke, did four things. It got Medicare benefits extended to pay for care. By using the Medicare benefits, it got health improvements that Mr. Johnson needed. Because of the improvements that he got and how improved he got going through skilled care, he was able to return home and the long-term care policy was extended that's therefore protecting uh, their assets. Just another, another example, Mr. Business Schmidt, uh, 72 and 70. Uh, uh, this is really a kind of a very proactive type plan. Uh, 
Mr. Schmidt had 350,000 in IRAs, Mrs. Schmidt, $200,000. Uh, they had some investments, a home, three children, and five, five grandchildren. They, they really wanted to protect each other. I think that was their guiding purpose, but they did want to leave something to their grandchildren. They were concerned if one gets sick, the, all the assets would be depleted and the spouse, the well spouse would be impoverished. In this particular case, we were able to find a hybrid life insurance policy that had a long-term care rider with no annual annual no annual premiums. In this particular case, we bought a two hundred fifty thousand dollar, and I don't say we, we we caught we put them in touch with someone that acquired a two hundred fifty thousand dollar hybrid policy, life insurance policy that had a long-term care rider of $7,000 a month for five years. Uh, if they file a claim on the long-term care, all it does is reduces the death benefit on the hybrid life insurance policy versus losing it uh, outright. Like in my, I have traditional long-term care. If I don't use it, uh, all the premiums I've paid are, they're just out the window. This was an interesting case because actually it was the children, their children that called and made the appointment because they just wanted their parents to have some type of plan. Uh, they just didn't want a mess. So uh, they, the Schmidt were very happy that their children urged them to explore uh, planning op options. And then, <clears throat> One other one, this is uh, actually a, a rather recent case. Um, so uh, the, the Lundgrens uh, contacted us uh, and actually the neur neurologist recommended they get a hold of us. Uh, Mr. Lundgren has been diagnosed with early cognitive de decline, but he's still a very active farmer. He's just, he's in his sixties. Uh, he's very concerned uh, about what would happen if years from now he needs care, and he's concerned about his wife and his children. When I, when I talked to him, he said, I want to stay in control, but I want to be sure my wife and my land are protected. So what we did is we set up very broad powers of attorneys for him. We put the, the Lundgren's land into a special irrevocable trust that would protect it from long-term care costs. We added his care instructions to his healthcare power of attorney so that his wife will know what his wishes are at a time when he can no longer, no longer express them. And we talked to his wife and his children about what those wishes were so that when it comes to that point, there's no one fighting. So the result was that though it may be several years before Mr. Lundgren ever needs health assistance, his goals are achieved <clears throat> through uh, his plan that is set forth in his documents. His land is protected from long-term care costs. He's assured that his wife will be paid, will be have income and that the land will pass to his kids. But he remains in control and his wife is granted the power to further protect resources at a time when maybe he cannot do it. Uh, and his care goals are protected, taking pressure and guilt off of his family. So again, we've kind of talked about pre-planning, we've talked about uh, 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 pre-planning without any kind of diagnosis. We've talked about, in this case, uh, planning, even though we've got a diagnosis, but I want to talk to you about planning uh, using Medicaid. Because I hear a lot of misconceptions uh, about uh, Medicaid. And again, one of the things I said early on is that you don't have to go broke uh, if you need long-term care. So uh, Mr. Reed has cancer. Uh, He's been discharged to a nursing home. He's paying about $8,000 a month. The assets include uh, 
Mrs. Reed's $80,000 IRA, a home in a joint account of $60,000. Mrs. Reed was told by the nursing home she would need to spend down all of her resources before Medicaid would help. And Medicaid would put a lien on her home. And she's worried that if her husband goes on Medicaid, she, uh, he would not get good care. In this case, we got Mr. Reed on Medicaid. Mrs. Reed was able to keep all of the assets, all, her, all of her IRA, all of the $60,000. We set it up so there was no lien placed on the home. Uh, and if she wanted to sell it and buy a different home or do something else with it, she could. I want to point out here that if Mr. Reed was a wartime veteran, the VA, we could have tapped into the VA pension benefits that would have paid him up to $2,200 per month tax-free. And $2,200 a month that could never be put, would never attach as a lien to his home. Medicaid is very complex and there, there's a lot of ins and outs and, and rules that, that change all the time. Uh, I, I had yesterday, day before yesterday, I was looking at a rule that took a case in one direction in, in April, but effective May 1, the rule goes in a different direction. Uh, and staying on top of that is a, a full-time job for my staff and me. So let's talk about this then. If, if you're, you're dealing with this, wondering how to pay for care, what you need to do is uh, uh, schedule a strategy session as soon as possible. Let's explore all the funding uh, resources. Uh, I wanna get good power, powers of attorney and other estate planning documents in place. And kind of understand our, our goal, just like it was with my grandmother, is to find, get, and pay for good care without going broke. Uh, this uh, pad is an interesting uh, situation. Uh, that I uh, uh, worked with her, with her. Um, my back, my recollection of Pat is that they had moved to Kansas uh, with her husband, she and her husband, to be near family uh, because she wanted to take care of him. Uh, she was very bitter uh, what, uh, uh, how life had dealt her these cards. Uh, and when she met with me, uh, we really had a journey together. Um, and it was a very satisfying journey because she became such a close friend of our office. Let me quote her. My husband needed nursing home care. You guided me through the process. Your care coordinators made sure my husband was getting good care. I highly recommend you because you're always there for your clients and will guide them through everything that goes on. Things we never expected to go through. And I think that's kind of where she was. She was having to go through things that she never thought she was going to have, to, she and her husband were have to, would have to go through. Let's talk a little bit about uh, don't pay unnecessary taxes. And this is really important. Uh, there have been some changes under uh, what was called the SECURE Act that was passed uh, 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 right before COVID, had to do with IRAs, uh, uh, the way you distribute IRAs is different now uh, than, than it was before the SECURE Act. It used to be I could give my IRA to my kids on my death and they could take it out over the remainder of their lifetime. Now they can't, they have to take it out within 10 years, which causes an acceleration of taxes. Uh, the, the, you know, we can now uh, contribute to IRAs longer. Um, in fact, if we're working, we can continue, continue, continue to contribute to IRAs uh, even past uh, 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 72 years of age. Uh, there was also the CARES Act was passed it allowed withdrawals from uh, 401ks uh, uh, that 
could be repaid uh, uh, over a three-year period that would not cause taxes to be due. Uh, there was some, some language that made gr greater incentive for charitable contributions uh, using IRAs. We have to be careful about uh, capital gains. The capital gains are those taxes that you pay if you sell something for a profit. Um, there are ways that we can stretch that out. Um, I, I always try to encourage my clients not to, pay, to sell land that's very appreciated to pay for long-term care costs because we have other alternatives. Uh, a lot of times uh, the, uh, uh, a year where you sell a, a lot of property or cash out an IRA creates a lot of income with the net result that your Medicare premiums go up. And, and that's always a shock to a client when they cash out an IRA to pay for long-term care and then get whammied with uh, a year worth of increased taxes or increased premiums uh, for Medicare. In addition, if you've got a, a lot of income in a year because you've sold property or whatever, you can actually get hit with what's called a health care surtax of 3.8%. For a single, anything over $200,000, for a married couple, anything over $250,000. And while a lot of my clients, most of my clients, don't have that kind of income ordinarily, but if they sell land, those capital gains taxes are imputed in there. And then, then all of a sudden, they're paying more Medicare, Medicare premiums and they're paying a third tax and they're moving up into a new tax bracket. Just for your information, the federal estate tax is now $11.5 million. So until you reach that point, you don't have to worry about it. And that's for a single individual. So let's, I mean, let's talk about the Augustines for a minute. Uh, they wanted to transition their farm to the children. Uh, they were in the process of selling it. Uh, the planning concerns were, were the capital gains taxes, uh, taxes that the children wanted to buy each other out. Uh, they were concerned about losing control. I made them aware of the Medicare premiums and the surtax. So what the solution was that we placed the land into a trust, into a special irrevocable trust. Uh, we gave the income to the children. They're going to get a step up in basis. Uh, they, uh, my clients, Mr. and Mrs. Augustine, uh, retain the right to change the beneficiary. Uh, as, as a result, there were no tax consequences. There, were, there was no surtax or increase in Medicare premiums. And again, that, that Medicare premium can jump from $148 to $504.90 if, if you don't do it correctly. And so finally, I want to talk a little bit about uh, staying at home. And this is probably the most important goal uh, for, that I have for my clients. Uh, and one of the things I like for them to realize that it's not staying at home or going to the nursing home. There's a lot of things in between. So let me go back to my grandmother, kind of where we started here today. Um, she had a saying, honey, I know, I'm, I'm, I know someday I will have to go to the nursing home. I just don't want to know about it. And the point that she was trying to make with me was that as long, as long as she was cognitive, she wanted the dignity of risk. She wanted to, to, to make her own decisions. When I took over her, uh, her care, she was 86. Uh, my mother was her last child and, that passed, and, and she passed away. Um, she was 560 miles from uh, the nearest family member. Uh, her health issues included uh, heart frailty, depression, uh, and giving up. Uh, she had, was on hospice twice. 
uh, her resources were down to $60,000 in a home. But again, her goal was to live independently and alone. So her issues were limited money, uh, failing health, being on hospice, healthcare agencies urging that she go to a nursing home and remoteness from family. So my journey with her was quite the journey. When I took over her care, she had three to six months to live. That went on for 10 years. Uh, but what, what we did is I got one of my, my only care coordinator at that time helped me. We, we found some resources in the community. She was able to stay at home for about six years. Then we moved her to assisted living from Fort Worth, Texas to Hayes, Kansas. And she lived there for four more years. And then she spent 50 days in a nursing home and she died at age 96. The lessons from all of that, uh, both from a lawyer standpoint, but also from the standpoint of a caregiver, from the standpoint of a grandson, was that with proper guidance, you can stay at home longer. Your transition can be very gradual. Uh, there needs to be support for the caregiver. And with proper planning, resources can be stretched to achieve your goals. So what do you need to do? Uh, again, we would like to have a strategy session with you if any of this uh, rang true with you. Uh, you need a strategy session if you're concerned about developing aging or chronic care issues. Don't wait. The longer you wait, the greater the crisis and the more limited the options. No matter where you are though, no matter where you are though, don't give up. There are solutions. JB came to us um, trying to take care of his wife. And he was a typical guy, typical farmer that was independent and never wanted to ask for help. But we were able to work with JB and his comments were, I felt very comfortable with every, everyone I worked with. Clink Scales helped us through some very hard years. That was a, a big profound statement for JB. So, so far you've discovered that there are important components and considerations for your long-term care plan. There are ways to preserve and protect your assets and if you need long-term care, you don't have to go broke. With planning, you can avoid paying taxes unnecessarily to the government. And with proper planning and care, you can delay or avoid the nursing home, allowing you to stay at home longer. So I hope you get this one thing. Proper planning with an expert allows you to achieve your long range goals and protect your wishes, your family, and your property, but it requires proper planning. How do you make that happen? In the secrets that you need to know for the second half of life, there are important components and considerations for your long-term plan. We're going to show you ways to preserve and protect your assets. We're going to show you ways to not pay unnecessary taxes to the government and we're gonna talk about different ways to stay at home. So how does this work? We're gonna give you some contact information on how to get a hold of us where we're going to schedule a, a strategy session that'll be from 60 to 90 minutes in Zoom or, 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 or uh, either in person or by Zoom or by telephone with me or one of uh, the other two partners of, in, in my office, uh, Jenny Walters and Adam Deese. At that meeting, we'll discuss your financial and legal needs. We're going to review your current estate plan, review your concerns regarding preserving and protecting your assets and your wishes. We want to establish with you long-term goals 
that we want to discuss tax consequences. And I'll answer all of your questions that you have about your, your unique situation. And at the end of our time together, what's gonna to happen is you're gonna have a better clarity of your issues and your goals. And you'll, we will have established some long-term goals with you. We'll develop a plan for your second half of life. And you'll know what documents and other tools you need to get in place. We'll design a blueprint of each step that we need to go through to achieve those goals. And then you'll also know exactly what the investment is going to be to achieve the goals. What's it, what's it gonna cost? After our meeting, you'll then decide to get started. And we'll develop a written plan with recommendations and we'll work with you to implement that plan. We'll prepare all the legal documents that reflect your goals and objectives. And we'll schedule another meeting to sign, review, sign, and implement the documents and tools. And then we're going to work together on, with other tools and steps, such as how to title property, what to transfer, and so forth. And most important, our team is going to walk you through the process from start to finish. And at the end, you'll know everything is done the way that you want it. Our normal uh, consultation uh, is $450 uh, for this type of consultation. Uh, but if you book uh, for today, it's going to be free. Uh, sounds too good to be true, so what's the catch? The catch is there's only seven spots available in the next four weeks. Uh, I, I know uh, from last couple of weeks ago, we had a lot of calls and uh, didn't do a great job of getting them on the calendar. We've got them on the calendar now, but I would want you to get a hold of us as quickly as you can to claim one of those spots. Otherwise, they're going to get pushed out. Call this number 877-325-8040, or actually Emily is going to send you a survey monkey through your email uh, that will allow you to request the consultation. And then what will happen is that somebody will reach out to you right away uh, and they'll schedule a phone conference with you or do the phone conference right then to talk about what's going on. And if we can help you, then we're going to get you on the calendar. My personal guarantee is that you're going to know more after that meeting than you did today, than you did before today. You're going to have an analysis of what happens if you do nothing, and your time, time is not going to be wasted. Again, call the number 877-325-8040. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the survey monkey that you're, you're going to get. You can click on there and put in your information and we'll reach out to you. So for doing this, we're going to give you a gift. Uh, uh, this is a book that I wrote a chapter in, what you really need to know for the second half of life. And you're going to get a written summary of, of our recommendations. So remember, uh, call this number. Uh, uh, if you want, uh, uh, our assistance, if we can help you to schedule your free strategy session. Uh, again, at that strategy session, you'll get a, an analysis of your current plan, the a written report to achieve your goals, and the free booklet, free book. So Emily, I'm going to turn this over to you and see if there's something you want to add. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Randy, for that wonderful information. At this time, I do not see any questions in the chat box, but if you have any, please do go ahead and type in those questions in there while we're closing up and we can address those. Um, right now, before we kind of finish closing, I do want to talk a little bit about some of the other workshops that we have coming up. Randy did mention that we are hosting um, a series tomorrow at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. about how to pay for long-term care.
So if you are interested in that, in attending that workshop, please call our office. That number is there on your screen. Um, and we'll help you get all registered or you can go to our website at elderlawkansas.com backslash events. And I just put that in the chat box. So if it's easier, you can just go ahead and click on it. We do also have multiple other events coming up. Um, we have a great in-depth conversation about what elder care is in May. We have another session for if the diagnosis is dementia in June. And then we have a really famous speaker that will be educating and inspiring us also in June about how to move past this pandemic and kind of create the life that you want. So we have a lot of great things coming up. Um, please check out our website in that chat box there um, to register for any of these events. Um, they are free. Um, and message us for our office for more information if you need that. Also, like Randy mentioned, you will be receiving that follow-up email from us at Scales that has that SurveyMonkey link. So please go ahead and click on this to request that free strategy session and we will get back to you to get that scheduled. And I actually just put that um, in the chat box as well. This follow-up email will also include a recording of today's session, so you can re-watch it and take notes. You can share with family members or friends um, who might find this helpful, and then you can also rewind to parts of the workshop that you need to listen to again. So that SurveyMonkey link is in your chat box. Um, it doesn't look like we do have any additional questions right now. Um, so I'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you again, Randy, for sharing that helpful, helpful information. and. Um, Thank you all for attending. We really appreciate taking the time out of your day so we can help you along your journey. Please go ahead and fill out that survey and we hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.